Hey everybody, happy Friday and happy Valentine's Day. It's uh, Facebook Friday and we're gonna do birthday cards today. I know it's Valentine's Day, so really it's too late for me to do any Valentine projects with you. So we're gonna do some birthday cards. We all need birthday cards, right? All right, I'm gonna wait a minute just to make sure everybody jumps on, everybody finds me. All right, I see you guys. All right, let me make sure I am in the right place. So today is Valentine's Day. Are you, do you guys celebrate Valentine's Day? Do you do something special? My husband and I have been married 20 years, 20 and a half. Um, and we just kind of, you know, hang out. <laughs> we don't like to go out with all the crowds. So we really haven't done much for Valentine's Day in many years. But we like to spoil the kids. This morning we... Uh, I had lots of goodies for them. The two older girls got a ring from James Avery, which is a Texas jeweler. They love James Avery. And the little one, my little fifth grader, she's suddenly become obsessed with um, the Dallas Cowboys. We don't really watch pro football, so <laughs> we're not sure. She's very um, tomboy, likes to play with all the boys out on our in our cul-de-sac, and she's just decided she wants to play football. So she got some... Dallas Cowboys merch, as she calls it, <laughs> and chocolates, of course. All right, I see you guys all jumping on. Good, good, good. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm going to run through a couple of things. Um, if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday before, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Every Friday, um, almost every Friday at two o'clock central, I go live right here and I make three projects. I usually pick one stamp set to focus on. Um, and this week I'm doing the happy birthday stamp set, which is a celebration stamp set. You get it free with a $50 purchase. And um, I got really excited about the stamp set when Stampin' Up! released the dies that match it. So I feel like now that we have the dies, it really elevates the stamp set and you can get a lot more use out of it with very little fussy cutting. No fussy cutting, really. Um, so we're going to make three cards with that. Um, if you hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com, I have a post up right now with the three pictures of the projects as well as the PDF right here. You can find it under the third photo. It has all the product information, um, the item numbers, the price, as well as the measurements for everything that we make here too. Um, another thing that I do is I offer the make and takes for free. So you can get all three of these projects for free if you place an order, a $35 minimum order, using today's host code by Monday at midnight. Now let's talk about this for a second, all right? Here is what your Facebook Friday projects look like. This was last week's. Um, here is the one we did um, when we did the Paris stuff. Um, they look different each time. Here's a Valentine one. All right, I include everything that you need except for stamped images, okay? There were some of you out there who thought maybe I was stamping images and sending them. And I was not. Last week when I sold all my extra Facebook Friday kits, a handful of you called Stamping Up to report me. <laughs> you were wrong. I'm not including stamped images. So you can rest easy, guys. I'm following the rules. Um, it is Stampin' Up! policy that we never mail or give or sell a stamped image. It's something that I have known for 10 years. It's something I teach my team. And I would never sell a stamped image in a kit. Never has happened, never will happen. So don't worry you guys, when I sell these it's just paper, maybe a little ribbon thrown in and in there. You need the stamps to make your kits, okay? So when I tell you I'm sending you three projects for free, everything's in there except for the stamped image. You're gonna need the stamps and the ink and the adhesive to make the projects. Okay, maybe I just haven't communicated that and maybe I, I just took it for granted and thought everybody knew that. But I'm sorry that I didn't communicate that. Hopefully, you guys knew that. So yes, I'm not sending stamped images. What you see right here, I think maybe that's where people are getting confused. Maybe people haven't been watching. But I always include a thank you tag 
in place of a thank you card, okay? This is has nothing to do with your projects. This is a completed gift tag as a thank you. In my classes, I staple it to candy. You get candy. With these, I don't do candy to kind of minimize on the shipping. But that is not a pre-stamped image for you guys. That is a thank you tag, okay? Are we clear? Is everybody good? <laughs> if you get a Facebook Friday kit, you will need the stamps, the ink, the adhesive. It's always been that way. And it'll always be that way because that's the rules and I'm a rule follower you guys it's funny because if you knew me you would know that I would never not follow the rules I have been a rule follower since I was a little bitty my middle child's the same way we cannot go against the rules it's like not in our nature so don't worry I'm following the rules okay <laughs> all right so that being said, you can get those for free next week if you put in your order, okay? Um, exactly, Christine. What would be the fun in it if everything was done for you? Hello. I know. That takes the, the fun out of it, right? Thanks, you guys. You're sweet. Stampin' Up! called me on Monday to let me know there were many of you out there that were concerned I was not following the rules. So I just wanted to put all your minds at ease. Don't worry about it. I've got it down. I've got it covered. I'm following the rules and Stampin' Up! was like, yeah, okay. You totally are following the rules. Good job. All right, can we move on? <laughs> I want to remind you of the All-Star Tutorial Bundle. Here it is, 77 pages of step-by-step -step tutorials. This month, everybody did a project with Peaceful Poppies, okay? Uh, Robin, thank you. I thought I had explained it many times too. But now I know I have to cover it every week, right? <laughs> it's like being a teacher, right? You realize you maybe missed a few who didn't hear you or didn't hear the directions. So you gotta say it more than once. Facebook, for, I mean, uh, <laughs> all-star tutorial bundle, free with a $50 purchase, online purchase. Um, I mail the email them about, about once a week. Um, and you get it for free. You can also subscribe if you are a demonstrator and you don't want to order from me. Totally get that. You don't want to, you know, you want to order under yourself and get your discount. Or maybe you have a demonstrator and you don't want to order from another demonstrator to get this for free. That's totally cool. I get it. You can subscribe and get it for $15 a month um, and your fifth month is free. So really you're paying for four months and getting five months for free. Um, the details of this are on my on my blog you can click on that link down at the bottom and um you'll find it um <laughs> you guys are cracking me up i'm seeing all your comments i love it i'm gonna have to come back through later and read it um so you guys are making me feel better yeah i you know when your integrity is um questioned i think my friend belinda said it best um people when people question your integrity your business integrity it's um you know shocking because you know what kind of person you are. And so I just wanted to make sure everybody was clear. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Um, here's my project this month that's in the All-Star Tutorial Bundle, okay? Okay, clear, hopefully. If you guys ever have a question, please reach out to me. Email is best. Sometimes Facebook Messenger does not show that I have a message, especially if we're not friends and you Facebook message me, it goes into like a hidden inbox and I have to manually go over and check that from time to time. And I don't have my phone set up to get notifications um, from Facebook because my phone would be blowing up all day long. When you have a business on Facebook, you just, it's hard. So if you ever want to reach out to me, please email me. That's the best um, fastest way to get me. I check my e email three times a week. I mean, <laughs> three times a week, that would be bad. Three times a day, okay? Um, honeybee class, we have a little snag in the honeybee class, all right? So you guys, the honeybee class to go, the deadline is the 24th. We still have a week and a half for you guys to register for this. Um, I quickly ordered the Daffodil Delight ribbon um, before it went on back order, but I know that I haven't ordered enough because I ordered just enough for um, those people who added this class onto their retreat. So um, those of you who have purchased the class to go or who want to purchase the class to go, um, just know that we might have a little bit of de a delay on the shipping on these because the Daffodil Delight ribbon is on back order, okay? Um, I always expedite my orders in that um, situation. So whenever it comes into the warehouse, 
they'll ship it to me next day. So I get it out to you quickly. Um, but just know that it's a snag. The um, honeybee paper is also, uh, it's actually non-orderable right now. But believe me, I got a ton. <laughs> I have got enough honeybee paper. Um, I have been using my celebration rewards to stockpile that stuff. So just to let you know, um, you can still register for this class. Um, the link is on my PDF today. It's also at the bottom of my blog. The PDF version is also available if you just want the directions. Yep, got it. It's in my PDF store. You guys, I have over 100 PDFs in my PDF store. Um, and uh, Carla, thank you. I didn't mean for that to happen. Yes, they match. Um, so if you're ever wanting a PDF, make sure you hop over there. At the top of my blog, there's a, um, a little tab that says PDF store. All right. Okay, how about some prizes and let's get started. I've seen one of our prize winners already on here. Um, to be entered to win, they had to share the video last week on Facebook. Oh, by the way, I'm going back. No, I'll come back to that. Anyway, sharing, thank you. Those of you that shared, here are my winners. Carla, I saw you on here. Woo woo, Carla and Dauberdu. That's not her real name, but I know her real name and I have her mailing address. So Dauberdu, you know who you are. You're winning, both of you, so sentimental. I have both of your addresses, I do believe. So I'll be mailing these out to you early next week, okay? All right, thank you. I appreciate that, Nancy. All right, this week I'm giving away under my umbrella. You guys know that Rihanna song. Every time I say the title to this, I'm singing it in my head. Um, under my umbrella. These were actually prizes I gave away like a month ago and nobody claimed them. So today I ripped off the post-it notes and I'm offering up a, offering them up again. I'm using this, whoops, sorry, shook the phone. Ah, everybody hold your breath. Okay, um, I'm using this stamp set. I don't know if you guys can see right here for my stamp club to go projects in March. I'm working way ahead because I have a all whole weekend retreat next weekend and I'm gonna try to work on that there. So if you can see it right there, that's what I'm using. I love this set and I've been trying to wait until spring. So I think we could consider March. It is the beginning of spring, right? So anyway, if you wanna be entered to win one of these, just share the video on Facebook. Okay, did I cover everything? I think I did. Um, okay, I think we're gonna flip around. Um, I don't have all three of the cards pulled out. I just have one. Now, you guys, hold your breath, close your eyes, and wait until I switch the phone over. I don't have a fancy system. And sometimes I drop the phone, and sometimes you get to see up my nose. So hopefully that doesn't happen. So I'm going to just cover you up so you don't see me. You know, when you, when you, um, decide to do Facebook lives, it's very, um, overwhelming. You have to figure out what kind of equipment you need, what kind of phone holder, what's holding your phone, what's the lighting, all this. And we all, all of us that do videos and Facebook lives and stuff, we all have some kind of special system in place. Um, my friend Belinda, I mentioned her earlier, just at my team meeting on um, Friday, she was asking, I mean, on Monday, she was asking about Facebook Live. And um, it's funny, some people have super professional systems and then other people like me, you guys, have a curtain rod nailed into the ceiling holding a phone clamp. That's how it holds my phone. <laughs> Someday when we sell this house, we're going to have to have somebody come in here and clean up the ceiling. But anyway, you do what you got to do, right? All right, looks like we're good. I can see everything. Here's our first card. Now, let me point out to you, this stamp set I mentioned is a celebration stamp set. I'm sure all of you know, but you know what they say about assuming. I, I learned that lesson last week or early this week. Um, celebration is January, February, and March. And during celebration, I'm looking for my little catalog and I can't even find it. Oh, here it is. During celebration, you get something free with every $50 you spend or every $100 you spend. So this is one of the options. It's called happy birthday. Oh, I thought it was just happy birthday. It's actually happy birthday to you. I've been calling it the wrong thing this whole time. Happy birthday to you. And so Stampin' Up! releases in January. Then, surprise to all of us, in February, they release dies that match. Now, the dies are not a celebration item. These you have to actually pay for. You have to order these. Um, but it's a nice, if you ordered these and they're, they're $27, so you add on a few more things to get to 50 and then you get the stamp set for free. 
All right, so hopefully with the projects today, I can give you some ideas of, of some other things to add to your order to get you to 50. All right, now this card um, actually began as a, well, it was actually this card first, okay? See this card? It was my swap for my team swap this month. And then I decided I was gonna do something a little bit different. See how it's similar, but not exactly the same. I did different colors. And one thing that might turn you away from this stamp set is the idea that you're gonna have to color that cake, a lot of coloring, right? Now, if you're like me, you love to color. Um, but this is time consuming. This is gonna be a lot of coloring. So at each project today, I'm gonna show you a different way to color, all right? All right, let's get started. So this one um, we're not doing, it's this one we're doing. Don't you love my colors? Um, somebody said earlier that it looked like a creamsicle. Um, and yeah, I love when I can get all three of my projects to be similar in colors, because then the picture looks fun. Okay, so we're going to color the cake on colored cardstock with Stampin' Blends. Um, you may not realize that you can, in fact, color on colored cardstock with your Stampin' Blends. The first thing I'm gonna do is emboss this cake in white. And I'm gonna rub it with the embossing buddy. The embossing buddy is just a little helper when you're embossing. Um, it kind of helps you to release any static that may be on your paper because when you sprinkle on your um, in, um, embossing powder, sometimes it sticks where you don't want it to stick. And that help, helps with that. All right, so we're gonna use Craft Ink, Whisper White Craft Ink. I'm gonna stamp it on Grapefruit Grove cardstock. You could also use Versamark, although I think when you use white ink, and white embossing powder, you get a much more um, strong, crisp image. All right. Now, if you, wow, that was pretty good. I don't see any little crystals hanging out where they don't need to be. Um, if you do still happen, because it does happen, you get a little of those little flecks, you know, and where you don't want them. Keep a little skinny paintbrush with your tools, and you can just use your little paintbrush to brush them away. Any little. Um, embossing sprinkles anywhere that are on there will dry and will look messy. So you wanna make sure you get all of them off so that they're not where they um, aren't supposed to be. All right, now I'm gonna take my heat tool and I'm gonna heat it up until it's shiny. The white embossing powder turns shiny. You think nothing's happening and then suddenly you see it. And you can see it go from a dull white to a bright, shiny white. You can see the difference, right, you guys? Maybe. Now, I was just thinking, I have this little table tray I like to use when I'm coloring so you guys can see, because it gets me closer to the camera. And it's in the living room, I don't have it today. So, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to do it from far away. Um, oh, you know what, I do have this thing, but it's covered with stuff, oh well. All right. Um, I was going to say something and now I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know. All right. We do not have a grapefruit grove. Yeah, it's really far from the camera. Okay. Let's see if I can zoom in. Sometimes this screws things up. Uh oh, something happened. No, I don't want that. Uh oh. Okay. I can't, some like words came up, so I'm just going to leave it. I don't like not being able to see it. Okay. Hmm. Uh oh, uh oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, everybody, hold on. <gasps> it worked. I zoomed in. Did it work? Hopefully this one time I did this and then when I uploaded the camera or when I uploaded the um, movie or whatever, when I was done, you know, you uploaded to Facebook, it flipped and it was totally messed up. So hopefully it doesn't do that. Okay, so we don't have Grapefruit Grove Stampin' Blends. So I'm just gonna use pumpkin pie. All right. And I'm just going to take my light pumpkin pie and go in here with just to create some shadow and some depth. Those are just fancy words for it. Let me make it look a little bit better and a little more three dimensional. And so I'm just going to add a little bit of um, light pumpkin pie anywhere where a petal is overlapping another petal. 
it's going to be darker in there okay um so in there one thing that i did try with this stamp set was to um do white embossing powder on white cardstock i've seen some samples online and then you go in and you color it and it was beautiful and i do have it here actually let me show you you guys have probably seen it but it was so hard to see the white lines i mean it was so hard and so i was like okay i kind of abandoned that idea maybe if you have super good lighting okay now let me look at my sample. You can even go back and add a little bit of dark too, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. It it starts out really dark. Well, maybe I should. It starts out really, really dark and it fades a little bit. Um, so at, at first, like give it, a, give it some time to dry and see if you wanna add in the dark. I'm just gonna do like where those little, those little lines are and maybe underneath those curled leaves just to add a little more dimension. All right, now let's see, we're gonna do dark old olive for the, the leaves. The embossing will resist the color, so you'll still be able to see the embossed lines. All right, lots of coloring. I thought about doing some of this ahead of time today, but alas, I did not. And you guys, I did not do a clean recording today of any of these projects. Um, I'm working frantically to get ready for our retreat that starts on Thursday. Um, and I just just had to had to make some priorities, some priority decisions. All right, I'm gonna take the dark and color in those cute little, now you guys, this right here, I don't know if you can see that in the image. I can't decide if all of that should be orange or if that should be the little green leaves with a little bud. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm not sure. I've done it both ways and I've seen it done both ways. So I'm just gonna color it since I already closed my green. All right, all the little berries. Did I get them all? And that's it. All right, so the hard part is done for us here. We, um, okay, let's see if I can zoom out again because I'm gonna get the big shot. Um, we, the cake is colored for us because we, we uh, stamped it on colored cardstock. So all we had to do was color the flowers. And again, they're mostly colored too. We just really added shading to them and some dimension. And then we colored the leaves. So it was easier than coloring the whole thing. Joy, you think green leaves with the buds? Okay, on the next one, that's what I'll do. All right, so, and I haven't pointed out these dies. Um, they have several things on them. The outline of the cake, which was what we just did, and then it has these little leaves, like little leaves and little, I don't know, baby's breath. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. And of course, the cake stand, which is probably everybody's favorite. Okay, so I've got Mossy Meadow card base. It's just a piece of um, cardstock that is cut in half right here on the short side at four and a fourth and then scored at five and a half. Then I've got the pressed petals designer series paper. Do you recognize it from the annual catalog? And Anita, I know you're watching are my music notes upside down. One time I gave Anita a card. She's my daughter's piano teacher and she's my friend also, but she's my daughter's piano teacher and I gave her a card with the um, music note background stamp and it was upside down. And I didn't even realize it. She was so sweet about it. All right, now here is a Whisper White stitched scallop rectangle from the Stitched So Sweetly dies. Now we're gonna cut off the cake stand like that. And then we're gonna glue this one on. Mm, what kind of glue do I want it brave today? Hello, Lisa, I'm glad you're watching. Thank you, I hope you don't get in trouble at work. When I was teaching school, I would, uh, I mean, it's hard to watch things when you're teaching school, but when the kids are, um, you know, at recess or PE or music and you're just grading papers or cleaning up or doing whatever, we could, we could sneak things in. Days of Our Lives comes on at noon here. Well, it did back then. And that was always my lunch. So I would go back to my room. I should admit that. That's embarrassing. I would go back to my room 
and turn it on and eat my lunch and watch Days of Our Lives. Any Days of Our Lives fans out there? It's ridiculous. I know nobody wants to admit it. It's just one of those good background noises to have on sometimes. All right, so I'm gluing those like that. So they're going to stick out like that. I think this looks more like a wedding cake. I don't know. It's beautiful. The stamp set has sentiments for birthday and also, whoops, and also celebrate. Okay, what I should have done here, instead of glue, I should stick that on like that with a dimensional. Let's see, did I peel those off? Do, 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 and there we go. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I showed you the other card because that, that just shows you could do this with any color scheme, right? Any color scheme. Maybe if you're going to a wedding and you know her color scheme that she's chosen, you can change the colors. Color on a light colored cardstock and use the opposite color for the background. So if you look on a color wheel, you can see what's opposite. That usually makes it pop really good. All right, this is the Nature's Twine and it's Calypso Coral, but it goes very well. Robin, you like Days of Our Lives too? Good, I'm not alone. You know, I started watching Days of Our Lives when I was maybe sixth or seventh grade, because back then, you know, everybody was watching. And it's just kind of stayed on in the background all these years. <laughs> all right, there you go, guys. What do you think? Do you like purple and yellow or orange and green better? I think, I don't know. I love them both. I like this one, I think, the most. Is that crooked? Hmm, maybe. I don't know. I hope you guys like it. Coloring on light colored cardstock is fun with your blends. It makes, it kind of takes away a lot of the coloring work because a lot of it is already colored for you when you're just adding in um you know shades shadows things like that dimension all right thank you for the hearts you guys are so sweet all right let's move to project number two now project number two i think well i don't know maybe this is my favorite i'm not sure this one and i will say that there was a card i saw online that was very similar to this. And unfortunately, I didn't save it. I have no idea, but it was different stamps, but it was similar. So to whoever that was, sh she was the one that I cased. It was similar. But here, I wanted to show you how you can just use the flowers because the other die on here, look, it just cuts out the flowers. I mean, hello, brilliant, right? Because you know that some of us were gonna be fussy cutting it for sure. For sure, Stampin' Up! was thinking ahead. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna color it. Oh, I gotta grab those other blends. This time we're switching to Calypso Coral. And let me get my chamois. Calypso Coral and Old Olive and Mossy Meadow, kind of staying within that same color scheme. And yes, I'm cleaning my stamp on my chamois with my craft ink, it's fine. It's totally fine, it'll wash up, okay? All right, let's stamp. Since we're coloring with Stampin' Blends, we are going to use Memento Black. Memento is the black you need to use with your blends because it is water-based, and our blends are alcohol-based. All right, so we're just going to stamp it in the middle. All right, let's see. Can I zoom in again? Oh, there we go. Ooh, it's really zoomed in. Man, I feel like I learned something new today. I never think about zooming in. All right, so Calypso Coral. I'm gonna start with the light Calypso Coral and I'm gonna color all the petals of my flower first. All right, and I prefer the bullet tip on my blend. What about you guys? Do you prefer the brush tip or the bullet tip? I've heard people say they both ways, you know, like some prefer the bullet, some prefer, prefer the um, brush. All right, now I'm going to take my dark, and again, like we did on the other one, I'm going to go back here where these petals are overlapping, also where those little lines were, um, right there in the middle, add some dark, and then I'm going to take my light and just blend those colors out to the edges of those petals. All right, 
Now I'm going to do this super fast because we're on, we're on Facebook, right? I'm not going to really like go slow and take my time and make sure it's perfect because we all have things to do today. Like some of us are going to fancy dinners and some of us are ordering in and watching the new episode of Outlander that has been uh, dropped early. Did you guys know Outlander fans? The Outlander season premiere is uh, was supposed to be Sunday and they released it at midnight on this Stars app. <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys, I am the I am the world's biggest Outlander fan. I don't care what you say. I am obsessed. I've read the books numerous times, numerous times. Um, I love, love, love Outlander. Um, I discovered Outlander only about, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. Oh, my husband's read them. We've listened to them on audio. We are both completely obsessed with Jamie and Claire. If you have not seen Outlander or heard of Outlander, you need to get on board. It's amazing. Time travel through Scotland, the American Revolution, romance, of course. So good, so good. My husband and I actually want to go to Scotland and do the Outlander tour. I know when I say it out loud, it sounds kind of sad, but I mean, we'd like to see Scotland, but We'd really like to do the Outlander tour. It's fun. If you haven't listened to the audiobooks, you guys, do you guys listen to audiobooks? I listen to audiobooks all the time while I'm exercising, while I'm working. Um, they're awesome. And the Outlander audiobooks are excellent. Yeah, so you guys, you need to check it out. Janie, okay, Outlander started as a series of books. Okay, you guys, did you see what I do, did? Now I'm going to go back with my old olive light. Outlander started as a series of books, and I think she started like in 1998 or something. It's been around for a while. And it's a series of books, and um, it's about a woman who is a World War II nurse. She's newly married, and they go to Scotland, and she basically falls through time 200 years back and lands in Scotland and falls in love with a Highlander. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. I, I just, I'm a, a totally obsessed. It's taken everything in me today to not watch it because my husband will be so mad if I watched it without him. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. That's our Valentine's date. All right, I'm gonna do those little leaves dark. See how I just went over that line? That's all I did on the green. I just went over the line with the dark and the rest was light. All right, now I'm gonna go back with my dark Calypso coral and color in all those little buds and berries. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now some of you are like, bye, I'm not watching anymore. I'm going to watch. Outlander is on Stars, which is like HBO, you have to pay for it. But right now you guys, my, I was just telling my mom, the Stars app right now is $20 for six months, six months. So then you can go back and watch, because what is this, season five? So you can go back and watch all the seasons. And you have six months for 20 bucks. Where, oh, I need to zoom out, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking about Jamie and Claire. Okay, all right, look, using that die. We don't need to worry about the cake. We're not using the cake. Um, yeah, so the Stars app, you download the app, like you would HBO app or Amazon Prime app. And then you just sign up and it's 20 bucks. Not a month, but for the whole six months. I know. Look at, I'm here selling you subscriptions to, um, <laughs> to uh, stars. And then, and then you'll come back to me in two weeks and say, oh my gosh, Erica. Hold on, I forgot the stuff over here. Now I can't get anything done because all I wanna do is watch Outlander. I know. Okay, let's, we're going to, we're going to use the celebrate here. And we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to do early espresso cardstock. And I really struggled trying to fit the sentiment in on all of these cards, actually. You notice the other one didn't have a sentiment because the sentiments are kind of, oh, see what happens when I'm rushing. Okay, let me get my paintbrush. 
um, the sentiments are kind of big and I don't want them to take away from, oh, come on. Okay, let's, let's wipe it all away and let's try again. I might need to get another piece because I'm just like rushing and I'm talking about other things. Um, no, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, sentiments. Um, so I, the sentiments, every time I tried to use them, I felt like they were really taking away from the cake image. And I didn't like that because the cake and the flowers and all that is so beautiful. So this one, I'm just gonna cut it down. I'm gonna fussy cut the celebrate. If you don't like that and that's like, ugh, too much fussy for you, then you could do like a little banner or you could just stamp the sentiment on the inside, which is what I'm gonna do with those other cards, whether I use them for birthday or, um, you know, wedding or shower or whatever. Because they're pretty fonts, um, but uh, I just didn't want them, I could not get them to not take away from the beautiful cake, especially when I've spent time coloring it. <laughs> I want it to be the star. Okay, good. Yeah, you need to you need to go get it, Janie. And Sarah, you just did the star six months. How can they do that? That seems so cheap. I'm telling you, we're probably paying more. I know we're paying more than that with our cable subscription. Okay, now look what I'm doing, guys. Just fussy cutting around these words, which is really, I know some of you are like, that's crazy. But try it. I don't always love the end result. Sometimes I'm like, mm, that that doesn't that looks like a kindergartner cut it. But I like this one because it kind of blends in with everything. You guys, I'm reading a really good book right now. Listening to it, actually. My mom recommended it, The Dutch House. It's narrated by Tom Hanks. And it's excellent. It uh, reminds me a lot of Goldfinch, which was my favorite book I read last year, um, just in the way that it's written. Um, not really necessarily the story, somewhat, it, but it's really good. So if you're looking for a good book or great audiobook, The Dutch House. Okay, we're ready to put it all together. Now you'll notice I have pre-cut a bunch of these guys, four to be exact. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the dimensional trick this time. The little baby's breath things, I don't know what they're called. They are in Old Olive and the bigger leaves are in uh, Mossy Meadow. Now I've put dimensionals there on the back and I'm just going to take these and I'm going to just kind of layer them as I'm looking at it from the front. I don't want it sticking out too far, but you can kind of just stick them on to, I'm seeing you guys, Karen, I do a lot of audiobooks. I walk, mostly walk now, I can't run anymore really, but walk, run every day, well, five days a week. I walk my daughter to school and then I do, um, I do two more miles, so I do three miles every day. Um, and I listen to audiobooks while I'm doing it. And it makes it go by really fast. Those seem like they're sticking out a little bit high, don't they? Um, it actually makes exercising um, go by really fast. And um, sometimes I'll even keep walking longer than normal because I want to finish whatever it is I'm listening to. So I listen to audiobooks. And I read at night too. That helps me fall asleep. Fall asleep. So I'll read and listen, but mostly listen. All right, now I've put that down on a crumb cake stitched label. Um, those dies are called the stitched label dies. They're in the annual catalog. And I'm gonna put a mini dimensional on the back of my Celebrate. And I'm gonna put that like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see if I can get it straight, like that. Okay, so there's our main little cluster. Now. Whisper White card base, same as before, a five by three and three fourths piece of um, Calypso coral. I have embossed it with the, what's it called? I can't remember. Mm, I know it, the Scripty 3D embossing folder, okay? We're gonna use it on the next project too. It's a good kind of a subtle texture. 
All right, and then we'll bring back the dimensionals. Um, Nathan, you're totally right. Um, Tom Hanks is excellent. Um, yeah, I think we could all probably listen to Tom Hanks read the phone book, but um, he's good. I have some narrators that I love. Uh, sometimes I will pick a book based on a narrator um, because I loved the narrator before. There was um, a series I read, oh, I can't remember last year and I can't remember what it's called, but I love the narrator so much that I went and found other books that she um, narrated. <laughs> they weren't as good, but I loved her voice. She was so good. If you listen to a lot of audiobooks, you become kind of um, addicted to certain ones. And then if they don't narrate a book in the series, you get all like mad, like, oh, they're not saying it right. All right, there we have it. I added some champagne rhinestones, which are on back order. Champagne rhinestones, just a few. And there we have it. Celebrate wedding, bridal shower, whatever. Mother's Day. I mean, it could go any, any direction, this card, right? What do you guys think? You like it? Again, you could do other color schemes. You could do purple, blue, pink, whatever. But I really liked the coral color. Thanks, you guys. I love the hearts. All right. One more. One more. And... Let's see, do I need anything off of here? I don't know if I do, but I'm gonna move this and grab the last tray. Gosh, I think I have embossing on every, no, I didn't do, yeah, I did. Heat emboss on all three cards, wow. This one was the third one. I The first two, no problem. But then I had a really hard time getting the third one done. And I usually get my projects done way ahead, but this week I had a hard time. Um, but then I got it done yesterday and I loved it. So you can see I stuck with the same color scheme. This paper back here is um, the Paris, the Parisian, what's it called? Parisian Blossoms. Did I put that on the list? I don't remember. Remember, you can go get this on my blog. What's it called? Parisian Blossoms. I said it right. Parisian Blossoms. All right. Now I have done the embossing ahead of time. Okay. You're going to stamp the cake twice on water with uh, watercolor paper and emboss it in gold embossing powder you see that and now we're going to color it with an aqua painter you could also use what I have right here a blender pen as well if you um, feel like aqua painters aqua painters are basically a paintbrush and you have filled the thing up with water so it's like a paintbrush that's already got water in it it can be a little um let's see if i can zoom in again it can be a little overwhelming because you have to really control your water um less is more really with this less is more um and that's why i dry it on a paper towel first so i'm getting that wet and then i'm going to come over here see how i've stamped my Calypso Coral ink onto a block, and I'm just gonna drop that ink into there. See how that works? And it's just gonna kind of run. It's gonna run and follow wherever that water is. It's fun. All right, now come over here. We're gonna do the same thing. Get it nice and wet with your aqua painter. The um, ink, will just stay the embossed lines that you've gotten wet. It'll just stay there for the most part, unless you have too much water and then it might go crazy. So you, that's why you just want a little bit of water. I'm having a hard time seeing the glare is uh, difficult here. I don't know why. All right. So there we've got that one. On my paper towel, I'm squeezing it, getting it wet, and then getting all the excess water off. All right, we've got one more flower. Grab our Calypso Coral and just kind of drop it. Now, one thing that I would do if I wasn't making a video or recording myself, um, I would let it sit and dry. And then I would go back and do it again so that I have some places of light color and some places of dark color. Because like where we did the shading before, we want those to be a little bit darker. So see how I'm dropping just a little bit more color there? It's not gonna be real precise, but that's okay because it's watercolor. 
you know, with the markers, we're much more precise, but with the watercolors, we're not. Now, for these little teeny tiny things, you gotta make sure that you use the very tip of your aqua painter. You can do it, it works. Or switch over to your blender pen. A blender pen is pre-filled for you it, with, with some kind of solution. It's not water, I don't think. Um, and uh, it's much less messy. Like It's not as liquidy. You have much more control with it. All right. All right. I love the way the gold looks with the Calypso. All right, now my old olive. Make sure you run your aqua painter dry on your, or clear on your paper towel so that you don't get the two colors mixed, which right there, it looks like they're gonna mix a little bit. Ideally, you probably wanna give the Calypso time to dry before, before you um, start doing this. All right, almost, almost. Let's see. And again, you could go light, you could go dark. I have um, old olive ink there already in the lid of my um, ink pad from a previous project, so I'm just kind of dipping in there. All right, looks good if I do say so. Now we're gonna have to just leave this for a few minutes to hopefully, dry up a little bit enough for me. Now, the reason we did two is because we're gonna cut the flowers out of this one and we're gonna cut the whole cake out of this one and we're gonna pop these flowers up over here. So it'll be, you know, um, have more dimension. So let me put that there and let's put the rest of our card together while we wait for that to get dry-ish. We may have to pull out the, um, the, where are my words? The heat <laughs> tool. Okay, Parisian blossoms. Oh, I better zoom back out. Okay, Parisian blossoms. Designer series paper. Does it, do you recognize it when I show you that side? All right, four by five and a fourth on a whisper white card base. Now, I have taken a three by four piece of crumb cake card stock and I have embossed it again with a Scripty 3D embossing folder. And I'm gonna cut it from this corner down to one and a fourth. So see how I did a little snip right there? Um, I measured it with my ruler and just did a little snip or a little pencil mark. And then you put it in your stamp and trimmer and you get that little snipped part right there in the gutter and then line up your pointy part. <laughs> also known as a corner, up in that co that gutter, and then just trim it and you've got that angle, all right? Don't try to freehand it because I screw it up. If I try to just, you know, like meh, cut it, that never works. So measure it down an inch and a fourth from that top corner. And then we're gonna just put that right there. Then I have a scallop a um, scallop border from the Seasonal Layers scalloped border. Thanks for the shares, guys. Thank you, Elizabeth, I appreciate it. I'm gonna put dimensionals on here, and I really kind of debated if I should make this pop up because we're popping the cake up, and then I decided the extra stamps, the extra postage is worth it. It's always worth it. Now, turn it over and just cut those to match like that. I love this card layout. I see lots of cards with this angle and I've done them before. I just love it, it's so beautiful. Okay, now let's come back over here. We've got the gold um, cake stand this time and let's see how dry our, our flowers are. Oh yeah, they look pretty good. Still a little, little bit wet, but enough, dry enough to put it through here. I love the cake stand too, I love it. Last year when we had that, the coordination products that came out and the little cupcake one had the cake stand, I loved it. And then they sold out, those dies sold out fast. And for me, I can't use it if, if I can't, you know, if I can't tell you guys where to buy it, cause that's not nice. 
so then I couldn't use it. Of course, you guys could use it, but these dyes are while supplies last. All these coordination products, they're out of publication products. Um, these dies, there's five other dice, there's five die sets all together in that awesome pack of paper. Um, they're all while supplies last. So, you know how that goes around here. Sometimes things sell out quickly. And then other times, like these gold enamel dots that we're getting ready to use, hang around for a long time. You just never know what's going to be popular. And, and we don't know, you know, like, well, how much is Stampin' Up! ordered? And you guys, you know what, I meant to mention this earlier when I was talking about back orders. The coronavirus um, in China, because of the coronavirus, China extended the Chinese New Year, right? They take like three weeks for Chinese New Year, but they extended it. This is probably not completely accurate how I'm retelling you this, but they extended the Chinese New Year time frame for people to go back to work. So all of our things that are manufactured in China, like dyes, are delayed even longer than they normally would have been because of Chinese New Year. So that's why you'll see more things on back order than normal. Does that make sense? So just be patient. Just be patient. Stampin' Up! does the very best they can with, with the back orders. It's frustrating for them, it's frustrating for us, it's frustrating for y'all, but it is what it is. Okay, so we have one plain gold. That was really fast too to color that, right, with the aqua painter. And I'm gonna put that on like that. Can you guys see that? I love the way that looks. And look, that little piece didn't come out. I didn't notice it before I put it on. There we go. Hmm, I love it. So then these things I just noticed are still online. They're still in the store. These came out like in, what, November? With that Christmas time is here, sweet. I love these. So I pulled mine out. Um, I have actually several packages of these left from classes and stuff. So I'm going to add <laughs> my, <laughs> okay, okay, I'll do it right. My little glob was getting too big. It was too big for the, for the, uh, Enamel dots. Okay, let's try again. Where's that? Did I throw it away? Oh, here it is. Okay, there we go. What? Stop coming out. I love this tool, but it makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. Sometimes it's like awesome and it totally does what it's supposed to do. And then other times it's like, mm, not today, Erica. There we go. All right, so gold centers. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's cut off the cake stand again. It feels like naughty, like I shouldn't do that. I feel bad <laughs> because it's so cute. But this one is so much cuter. All right, a little bit of, a little bit of our Tombow. And I'm gonna put that there. Um. Janie, yes, she's asking, do I keep some of my dyes even after they've retired? Um, very few. I got adhesive on that. Where's that paper towel? Very few because this is a business for me. Um, this is, you know, my job. So I can't really use things after they retire in my job because if I were to use all retired products, you guys would be like, well, that's no fun. I can't get that. I, you know, like... I, you know, I want to buy that cake stand, but I can't get it because it's retired. So I try not to, I try to only use current products. Um, I, there are, there are a handful of stamp sets that I've kept for sure. Um, just for my own personal use. Um, but as far as dyes, I can't really think of any. Oh, the itty bitty banners. Do you remember those? They were all those little skinny banners. I did keep those because those are, those are awesome. And, you know. You can use those anytime. All right, there we go. So a diagonally with dimensionals, extra postage needed. And then I love this, you know, our, our linen thread now comes on this spool. So then it's curly like this. And sometimes it annoys me, but then other times I like how it's all curly and the little little tendril things are hanging down. Uh, my friend Ange McKay showed me when I was at her house last summer that she bought a teeny tiny flat iron like a you know a hair flat iron teeny tiny little bitty one and she uses that in her 
craft room to straighten out ribbon and twine. So I got one of those and it works brilliant. It was like 10 bucks on Amazon. But this one I don't want to straighten out because I like it. See how it's all curly, curly. And there you have it. No sentiment. Again, you can put the sentiment on the inside. All right. All right. We have reached the end. What do you guys think? Do you love this cake stand? I'm going to, or this cake, I'm going to tell you that I was just like, meh, in the beginning. But now I love it, especially with these dies to cut those flowers and makes everything three dimensional. Where's my other one? Let's see, here they are. Okay, so let's review. We did this one, which was um, Stampin' Blends on colored cardstock. We did this one, which was Stampin' Blends on white cardstock cutting out just the flowers. And then we did this one, which was Aqua Painter on watercolor paper. Now I have a couple others to show you. I showed you, I've shown you guys this one several times. I've kind of abandoned this card because I don't know what else to do with it. Um, it's the white embossing powder on white, um, shimmer white cardstock. And then um, I think I actually used colored pencils on this and it was just so hard to see the white. And then I was just like, Ugh, and then I put on that cute paper and I don't know what else to do with it. I need to do something with it. But this one is from my downline, Heather. She sent this with our team swap this month and I love it. She colored her ribbon. This is the white seam binding. She colored that with a granny apple green stamp and blend. She colored her flowers um, and then put Wink of Stella on them. I don't know if you guys can see. And then how smart and fun is this? Um, cake stand in the sparkle, the silver sparkle um, paper. What's it called? You know, glimmer, glimmer paper. Gorgeous. She That's a ton of work, Heather. She embossed that. She embossed that. Man, nice work, Heather. All right, you guys. So remember, orders by Monday at midnight um, using this host code. Um, your kit will come let's all say it together, with no stamped images. Never has, never will. Those are the rules, right? Just to avoid anybody from being confused. Erica does not send pre-stamped images as per stamping a policy. We all should know that. Um, but it will come with all the paper that you need. I will do, um, I will cut out the, the rectangles for you. I will cut out the labels for you. But you will need the stamp set the happy birthday stamp set and ha uh, birthday dies. You'll need your ink, you'll need your embossing powder, and you'll need adhesive, okay? <laughs> okay, we know, we know, we know. Use the host code, minimum $35. If you bump it to 50, you're gonna get that stamp set for free and the all-star tutorial bundle. All right, thank you, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Um, next week, oh, no Facebook Friday next week. I My retreat starts on Thursday, so I will be gone. I will be at um, our winter escape retreat. And so there will be no Facebook Friday until February 28th. All right, I'll be back February 28th. All right? You guys have a great one, and I will see you. Um, well, I'll see you live in two weeks, but I'll see you on Facebook sooner than that. Bye, guys. Thank you.